Today I'm sharing a simple exercise that will allow you to master any lettering style. I'll be using brushes for my beautiful lettering brush set for the demo, but please feel free to use any lettering brush that you'd like. Let's get into it. I'm using a screen size canvas for this demo, but any screen size will work. And in order to get started, we need to go and find inspiration, a style that we would like to put our own spin on to make our own. So there are a few places you can look to find inspiration. You could go to Pinterest or really any online marketplace where fonts are sold. And my favorite for this exercise is my font. So we're going to hop over. I've got my fonts open here in a Chrome tab. And to narrow things down, you can choose either the handwritten or the script category. I find that I get better results for my personal taste when I choose script, although script and handwritten, you're going to get a lot of similar results anyway. So I'm gonna tap on script. And the reason why I like my font so much is you can define what the sample text looks like, and then you can scroll through really easily and see what your sample text looks like in all of the different fonts. Unfortunately, when your iPad is in portrait orientation, you lose the ability to input that text. So I need to turn this around temporarily and just pop in my sample text. So this is the little area right here, and now, it, of course, it appears. So I'm just going to type in every Tuesday here, but you can choose any sample text you'd like. And then to close out of this keyboard, just tap anywhere, and then you're back to being good. So I'm going to turn this back around now so we can scroll through together. You can see now I've got every Tuesday, every single font has those words set in it and you can look through and see what style is kind of speaking to you that you feel with your current skill set that you could implement your own unique take on. I'm looking for something that has a decent amount of contrast between thick and thin strokes. Like this one's got a, a nice contrast, but it's not really my style. So I'm looking for something that speaks to me a little bit more than that one does. And I want to show you some tips on pressure variation, so that's why I want one that's got a little bit more contrast. This one right here, I like a lot. Let me see what the script options are for this one. Yeah, this one that's looking pretty good. You can see how thin my strokes get right here and then the thickness there. And we've got a bunch of styles we can pick from here too. So I like, I'm leaning towards the bold version. So now we need to take a screenshot of it. And in order to do that on this iPad, I need to hit the top button and then the volume up button at the same time and that will create a screenshot. Now I can head back into Procreate and just hit the wrench, add, insert a photo and go grab that screenshot. All right, now I need to crop out what I don't need here. So I'm just gonna slide this up and the bold version is the one that I wanted. So I'm just gonna slide it up, deselect, select again. And anything that you slide off of your canvas will get cropped away permanently. There we go, now I just have what I need. And now we need to create our guideline. That way we can replicate the structure that this has. So by structure, I mean my baseline, my X height, my A sender, cap height, and my D sender. And if you caught my video a couple weeks ago on 10 lettering styles, I'll leave a link up on screen. You'll know exactly how to set all of that up. So what I'm going to do is just come to my wrench, canvas, drawing guide, and I'm just creating a base right here. I can just use the default grid. The main thing I wanna do is just align the baseline. And this one's a little bit bouncy. You can see where the bottom of the E hits is below where the bottom of the D hits. So normally, if this didn't have any bounce to it, they would hit on the same exact line. So that's something I need to consider when I'm creating my own version of this. So it looks like the majority are right around here. I'm looking at every, all of these ones are hitting the same. So I'm gonna keep it right here. It looks like just the D and the A are a little bit higher. The S is a little bit lower, but it's subtle. You know, it's not gigantic. Next, I'm going to create a brand new layer. Double tap where black is to get true black. I'm gonna grab the Mono Pencil Pro brush from the beautiful lettering brush set. We're going to be using brushes from this brush set for the entire demo. And I'm just gonna draw in some guides now. So I'm going to define my baseline. My baseline is right along this guideline. So I'm just gonna stretch it to about here. And now I need my X height. And my X height's hitting just beneath this guideline. So I can start where this E is and then just drag it across, hold until it snaps. And now I'm looking at where the A is and the top of that Y. And that feels fairly straight. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. And now I have a cap height and an A sender height. And these are pretty similar 
in height. So I think I'm just going to draw one in. And if they end up being the same height, that's fine. It's just another differentiating factor for my style versus the inspiration. So I'm just going to start here, draw this over. That looks pretty good right here. And now I need my descender. So anything that falls beneath the baseline. So I've got my Y's. That looks pretty good. It's going to leave that like that. All right. So now I've got guidelines that are <laughs> a little off kilter here. If I turn off my inspiration and if I turn off my drawing guide, we can see where my lines are. And I'm just going to extend them in both directions. That way I've got an even guide all the way across. To do this, I'm going to grab my selection tool. I've got freehand selected. I'm just going to grab it, select it, and then choose freeform and then just stretch it all the way over. And I may need to tap it back a little bit. So these ones meet up and there we go. And now I can do the exact same thing in this direction and just stretch it. That is step one, define your structure. I'm going to turn my inspiration back on and I'll label this one guides create a brand new layer right above it. I'm going to change my color to something really saturated. I have this like fluorescent green, but it'll work really well with our practice brush to keep an eye on our pressure variation. The hex code for this, I'll leave it a little bit larger on screen for you, but if you want to use the same one, that's my hex number. I'm now going to select my Inky Edge practice brush from the beautiful lettering brush set. And when I put lots of pressure down, you can see I'm getting a different color than when I put a little bit of pressure. These practice brushes within the beautiful lettering brush set are going to give you different colors based on pressure which can be really helpful as you're learning what the original lettering artist did when they created their style. The next step into learning more about the style is understanding the forms. I want to be absolutely clear here. The point of this entire tutorial is not to learn how to copy other people. It's to learn how different styles are made so then you can inject your own personality into a similar style to create your own take on a popular style. So in order to do that, we need to learn how a style is created, what types of forms, what types of movement does your hand need to make in order to create a similar feel. So the next step, even though it feels very wrong, this is just a learning exercise. You're not going to use this for anything but to learn. We're going to write right on top of the lettering so we can learn about pressure variation. So in order to do that, we're going to try and copy the width of these letters. And it may take a couple of tries to figure out the right size of your brush. So I'm putting max pressure down here and you can tell it's definitely too big. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush until I find a size that feels right. This one feels good. So this is about 10% for this iPad. And I'm just going to draw right on top. So I'm learning the downstroke of my capital E is full weight. And then as it comes down, I need to reduce my pressure. Same thing with the crossbar right here. I need to reduce it as it gets longer and up here as well. This V, really hard downstroke, light upstroke. I need to go a little bit heavier here on my upstroke. And then it comes around. This is much lighter right here. My R, instead of the traditional script R, is more of a sans serif R. So I need to remember that for this style. And then the Y is interesting because it almost looks like an A. Let's see. See how the A and the Y right here, how it's kind of closed? This one's kind of swooping it on a curve. So that's a differentiating factor for this style in particular. I don't necessarily need to do the same as I'm creating my own take on it, but I'm learning about how loose this feels. The T. It's a very loose kind of bouncy style. So I'm just kind of coming around and remembering how it feels. This S, normally when I would create an S, even if I start out with a thick stroke right here, my upstroke would usually have less pressure than this one. This one stays pretty thick all the way through. So I'm learning that that's something different than what I naturally do as a lettering artist. So we're just getting a feel for how our hand is moving, the general rhythm that our hand has as we're moving through the letters. So this was our first pass through. 
The next thing we want to do is duplicate our guides. So duplicate that layer and drag it right underneath. I'm going to turn off the version that I just made. And this time, create a brand new layer. I still have the Inky Edge practice brush. After you get comfortable, you can do that several times if you want to get your hand in that motion. And then when you're feeling comfortable enough, you're going to move on to the next version, which is looking at it and writing it down here. So this time it's going to start becoming more and more different from the original because you're not writing right on top of it. You're going to keep a similar rhythm to your hand movements, but it's nice to start introducing things that you like that you didn't like about the original style. So if I come through here, my E, I don't necessarily like the space right here. It's okay. I'm not super crazy about it, but one way to differentiate myself is to close that up. So maybe my E looks like that. So it's a little bit different feeling. And then this one kind of come, the V kind of comes at a curve right here as it comes down. So maybe I want mine to be more straight. And it's got this little loop right here, which I can or, you know, I don't have to include it if I don't want to, but little things. So it's really important to pick up on those details. I think I'm just going to draw this the way I usually would. The counter in my E, I'm going to leave a little bit larger. And I do want to keep this R style because I feel like it's more loose, which is the feeling that I want this style to have. And then I will do my own version of a Y that's a little bit different than that one. So I'm getting that looseness. I want to follow it, but I don't want to follow it too closely. Like I feel like this one has more of a slant to it and I did mine more upright. So this is another part of the exercise that you want to do several times. So that's something that I would change the next time I, I write it out. So we're still looking at the example as we're writing. So I noticed that this downstroke came all the way to the baseline, which mine didn't originally do. All right, so I'm getting a little bit closer, but I'm not too close. I don't really like how slanted this Y is. I prefer this Y. So now it's kind of time to take those mental notes and then do it again. Do it several times until you're feeling comfortable to move on to the next stage, because the next stage is to turn everything off and to write it out from memory. And this is the part where you really start adding in your own unique stylistic choices. You'll notice right away that you're keeping in mind the little mental notes that you made as you traced it and then as you did it just by looking at it because now that you're flying blind, you will integrate those little mental notes, but the parts that you didn't make mental notes on, you need to make decisions for yourself and all those decisions are unique to you. Those are the decisions that are going to make the style your own, your own take on the style. And it's important that it doesn't look exactly like your inspiration. You want to start picking up on those differences and lean into them because that is what's making this style your own, your own take on it. Let's compare what I've done to the original now and we can kind of see that I think mine's spaced out a little bit more like these ones feel a little tighter together but I like that mine has a little bit more breathing room this one feels more at an angle which gives it that more casual feeling I still feel like my version does feel casual but I like the angle of this one a bit more than the angle that I've done so that's something I'm going to consider the more that I draw it out and Overall, I'm feeling pretty good to move on to the next step. I've definitely made my Y very different. You can see the opening of this is very large compared to mine. I made mine quite a bit smaller. I think I might move more towards this because I bounced mine quite a bit. I think this is a stronger version. Now that we've got this and we've kind of given ourselves some extra notes, you can go through that exercise again, turn everything off and rewrite it again. Once you're to a point where you're feeling really good about your version, you have that muscle memory built up in your hand, that movement, you're feeling really good to expand upon the style. This is the most important thing. You cannot return to the original style to get additional letters. The point of this exercise is now you have to invent all the letters that are missing here. You can see we've only got two capital letters, so the other 24 are up to you to define by yourself with the movements and the information that you have right in the words 
or the letters that you've chosen to begin with. What I like to do is think of words that use a few letters that I'm already using, but also add on a few letters that I don't have yet. So an example of this, I'm going to turn off this original. An example of that would be the word thanks, because thanks is using a capital T, it's using an H, which is an ascender, and I have an ascender, so I already know that my ascenders are not looped. So my D did not look like this. It looked like this. So I know my H is not going to look like this. My H is going to look something like this. And this curve of my H is going to be just like a U, only it's going to be flipped. So the width of my U is going to be similar to my, the width of my H. I also don't have an N, but now that I've figured out my H, an N is just an H with a shorter initial downstroke and I don't have a K so the K is going to be a little bit tricky. A K is going to have an ascender so I know I'm going to have a strong downstroke but now I need to figure out how the rest of the K is going to feel and look. I know I'm going to keep it at a bit of an angle so I can already figure that out and I have a bit of a rhythm here like if we look at this it feels like I'm going like, it's, it can be helpful to just write it out. Like here's, here's how my hand feels as I'm going along. Now if I do something similar like this and then bring it down, now I've got a K. And it's mimicking the same type of rhythm and feel that I had down here. And I still have an S, so then I can add this on. So I think I've, I've got enough information now. I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to write out thanks. I kept more of an angle this time, which I like. My letters are a little more condensed, but they're not too tight, so I'm liking that. And yeah, I feel good about it. So now, not only do I have all of these letters, now I also have an H, an N, and a K. So then you would choose another word and keep adding on until you get through all of your letters where you're feeling really good about how they all work together. And you can expand upon your uppercase letters too. So that's the secret sauce behind these exercises is yes, you find a font that's inspiration that gets you started. You get your main structure with your guidelines. You get a few letters that you get comfortable with. And then it's up to you to reinterpret what you learn from those letters to all the other letters without ever looking at your inspiration again. The worst thing you can do is return to your inspiration and get too close to the letter forms that the original artist had. You don't want your style being mistaken for theirs. You're inventing a brand new style. It was influenced by a previous style, but it's not to be confused with the original style. Hopefully all of that makes sense and that you have a great time learning from other styles and creating your own styles because of them. If you have a few styles that you love and you want to convert into a working sellable font, you can learn how to do that in my online course, Learn Font Making, found at learnfontmaking.com. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.